Hi friends, welcome to CodeJana. In this video, we are going to finally deploy our application. So we are going to deploy our application on Heroku in this video. In the next one, we are going to take it up one step further with deployment of it on Linux server. So make sure to watch that video as well because eventually you are going to be installing your app on Linux server. So let's open our CodeJana underscore Flask folder open with code all right so how do we deploy our application devcenter.heroku.com then articles and then heroku cli so let's open this one and i'm going to leave a link to this website in the description so make sure to check it out all right at the bottom here and now according to your windows operating system you need to install either 32-bit or 64-bit and you need to click on the 64-bit installer i already have it so let's click on this and click on downloads so it will download this heroku x64.exe in your system now i've gone ahead and installed it so it will just create the libraries necessary to initiate that command wonderful so i already have heroku in my system so that's why i'm getting all of these commands so you can do just so much with this uh, heroku cli all right so now let's take it one step further what we need to do to actually export our application on heroku first of all we are going to just uh, log into our environment or activate it let's activate it wonderful now your next step is to create an account on heroku.com the website that was not opening just a while ago so we are going to be opening this heroku.com and yes it has successfully opened so i'm currently logged in so i'm just going to log out of this dashboard so just sign out and if you're a student then you don't need to you know pay for anything but it does come with a few you know catches if you have followed my plus tutorial series and you have you know created a postgres database then i'm afraid this heroku deployment is not for you if you had used the sql light version that i've also shown in my videos then you can deploy your application on heroku now this is the sign up page it is completely free you, you don't need to give any information that you don't want to i just type the information here and then create a free account so i'm just going to click login and here are my details so email address and password let's log in wonderful so we are already logged in now we don't have to do anything from here we don't need to create a new app or anything like that we just had to create an account because we need those credentials so now in our vs code terminal we are going to type heroku and then log in so it is going to ask you to press any key to open the browser so i've just pressed any key wonderful so it is waiting for the login great we are going to log into heroku cli great so we are logged in now in my case i was already logged into heroku in your case it will ask for your email and password that you just created after that you can close it and you will see it here logged in as kksonakia at gmail.com all right so let's proceed to our next step all right now we want a web server for our application that tells Heroku how to handle all of these script files. All right. So we are going to use Gunicorn or GUnicorn. All right. So it is an industry standard server because it's light. It is also very fast. So you don't need to do anything fancy there. So just pip install and then Gunicorn. Okay. So I already have it installed. In your case, it will go out there and install it. So wonderful. That one is done as well. Now. As you can see, I'm just going to scroll up. We have used all of these dependencies. We have used Flask, then Request, Redirect, all of these things. Now, behind the scenes, we are actually using a lot of libraries, a lot of modules. So we are going to make a list of all of those modules that we have used. Don't worry, there is a really simple command to do that. So just type pip and then freeze, then greater than sign and the convention is requirements.txt so save a file with the name requirements.txt so do that requirements.txt and now i'm going to open my you know this explorer here i'm going to hide everything that we don't need to see so you don't see any requirements.txt right now after doing pip freeze greater than and requirements.txt just press enter you can see a new file has been created requirements.txt like click on it and there we go we have all the files that we have 
used in this particular project all right you will also see a lot of files that you have not used now i would recommend you to not delete anything you do not understand because a lot of these files are dependent upon each other so these modules act behind the scene if you have not actively downloaded and installed them still do not delete anything which have been generated using pip freeze command so another step is done now we are going to create a proc file or a process file that process file is actually going to tell heroku how to handle that gunicon server that we have just installed it will also tell heroku which file do you want to run in order to run your whole application so in our case our file is this one the run.py1 it initiates our whole application all right so just click on the main code john underscore flask all right now right click it and just create a new file and with capital p proc file wonderful the icon has already changed now you just need to type few things here first of all the web server so just type web and then type column and then gunicon which is our web server for this project after that we are going to tell it the file that runs this application so the file name is run and then column we don't need to add run.py just type the main name without extension so this run file is the application file all right so that's it that's all you need to do just to be safe uh, press ctrl s or save this file we have already enabled auto save so no worries there now we have done everything now finally we are going to push these changes to heroku and how do we do that we do it via git application so we are going to initiate some git commands all right so let's initiate some git commands so first of all we are going to initiate a git repository all right so we can type git in it to initialize a git repository now just like heroku cli we had to download and install the necessary libraries if you don't have git installed if you have never worked with git before you probably do not have git installed in your system so commands like git in it are not going to work for you in that case you can watch my video on how to work with git scm the link is in the description below but i still want to show you so let's click on this new tab and type git scm then click on this downloads button and from here select your operating system we are working with windows so click on this and it will again install git in your pc so uh, from here select your bit it's 32 bit or 64 bit according to the ram you currently have in your system so just do that it will download an exe file just run it like we did with heroku and you will have git commands working for you i would recommend you to close vs code and then reopen it and then initiate the commands all right so let's initiate this git repo oh, short for repository wonderful so empty git repository is initialized you don't see it right here because it is dot git which is you know to hide the files so let's click on here now click on this view button and then hidden items so you can see that dot git is currently a hidden folder inside of it we have all of these folders and necessary files to run several git commands so let's do them one by one now to add all the files to our git repo we can do git add and then dot this dot will add all the files inside our code jana underscore flask directory wonderful you do not see changes right now because we are not viewing them but they are there now we are going to commit these changes so git commit dash m for message and type our first flask project commit all right this message can be anything all right this is just to you know keep track of your commits wonderful so as you can see we have created mod and this particular number and all of these files you can see that all the files that we have created including this pi cache one now if you want to keep things you know separate you can actually delete this pi cache folder don't worry it is not going to break your code so let's proceed further now finally we are going to create our heroku app so type heroku create and then the name of your application so it should be a lowercase and without any spaces so i'm going to type code jana flask 
all right so let's press enter and as you can see it is creating code on a flask and just wonderfully in few seconds it has created that now our files are still not in this url all right this url is not going to work so what we're going to do is we are going to just push these changes which are currently residing in our git repo to do that you need to do git push heroku master which is the main branch or master branch of your git repo all right let's press enter and wonderful so it is currently you know compressing the files and installing everything on heroku so i'm going to skip this section and we are going to wait and in just a short while you're going to see our application completely exported to heroku and we'll be able to see it using that domain name that heroku provides us all right wonderful so all changes were done and in this particular section it is saying that this app is deployed to heroku so now we can click control and then click it so let's open this wonderful so as you can see our application has successfully launched and we can access it from codejanaflas.herokuapp.com now since this is a free version of heroku we are not going to be able to use all the database functionalities that we have included in our application for example i can click on sign up button all right i can click on login button and i can also click on home button right so let's click on login and you already know that currently we have uh, an account named myth at gmail.com the password is one two three four five six all right so let's log in and there we go so our app has crashed because in this free version heroku is not giving us full access to our postgres database and we need to do some important things before we can get this database working so in my next video, we are going to work with Linux server. You're going to be working with Linux server, whether it is Amazon AWS or Amazon LightSail or Google Cloud. The basic environment is same if you are working with Linux server. So make sure to watch my next video because then we will have a full fledged working application with Postgres database. Also, if you still want to use Heroku to showcase your application, then all you need to do is switch your database, which is right here in init.py, switch this database to SQL Lite, which I have already covered in my video. The link is in the description. All right, so that is it for this video. It was a short one and I hope you learned something. Uh, one more thing, please make sure that this proc file is actually created right under code jana underscore flask folder and not this one. So let me open this folder for you. So in our desktop, we have this main folder. All right. And then we have all these files here. Let me just increase the size. So we have all these files. So make sure the proc file is at the main root directory of this project, which is this one right beside these requirements.txt and run.py. That's the only way Heroku is going to understand you have a proc file and you have configured this proc file with this information that you have a Gunicorn web server and run.py file is your application file. So make sure that proc file is at that level and not inside codejana underscore flask. So not inside this.